All right. Hello. How's it going? Happy to be here. By the way, my name is Adam. We contributed this beautiful song. So, uh, thank you very much. We've heard there's a huge shortage with socks with the open source community. They're completely Creative Commons. Rip them off. They're on Alibaba. It's awesome. Made in China. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Um, so my name is Adam. I'm from Haxer. Uh, and I was really thinking, I didn't know what to talk about, and Drew actually helped me with some really fancy technical sort of presentation, but I completely removed it because I have zero credibility to present to, present to you guys about anything that truly re relates to open source hardware. So I figured that I'll talk about something that I really know and something that's important for everybody. It's really how to build uh, a community, and in particular, an open source community, which is even a little different. Uh, there's a bit of a joke here without being a total sellout. Uh, we actually sold Hackster to Avnet, <laughs> but it's been two years. They didn't touch us. They kept us in a separate division, and we kept our principles uh, and our code of ethics uh, to date without touching the community. Um, so, so we'll talk about that a little bit. So hopefully you find this useful. It will be a little bit of a stand-up comedy here too, but um, we'll see how it goes. So Hackster uh, is a really fun community. Uh, there's a lot of awesome communities in the world. Um, shout out to our friends at Hackaday and Instructables and a lot of others, of course, GitHub and so many amazing communities in Stack Overflow, Sarah. Um, Hackster is uh, it's, it's a really pretty sizable community now. It's over 600,000 members of hackers and developers and, and, and artists, etc. Uh, it's growing at 40,000 members a month. We don't know where they come from, but they show up. That's like a lot of people every month. We have 14,000 open source projects and more, uh, over 200 platforms from 150 countries. And we're doing this for not too long, a little bit over four years, uh, with a bunch of partners. Uh, so Nate is here, so we love, we love SparkFun. I saw Jason, we love Big, BeagleBone, awesome. So uh, with a lot of really cool partners, which are both open and closed, and we'll talk about this too. So for those of you who don't really know, maybe Huxter, uh we have everything, like lots of really cool projects, anything from like this Alzheimer assistance that combines um, you know, open source and closed source and web services, uh, but the projects always have to be open no matter what, your source code, schematics, bill of materials, uh, everything has to be open and free and shareable. Uh, all the way up to a uh, hardcore, like, you know, blockchain signaling system from a PhD in Zurich that has built this crazy array and, uh, you know, has published his project. And of course, uh, we have to have some fun. So things like punch activated uh, arm flamethrower uh, by our friend Alan from Venice Beach. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with this kind of stuff. It's amazing. Uh, he did this for us. He got like a million page views on YouTube. It's pretty awesome. Um, all right, so communities. Community, you guys all know this guy, God. Uh, communities are the lifeline of any product, code, uh, sharing, services, log, or even any cause you might have. So really building a community is something that is really important. And a lot of companies actually also, organizations, uh, struggle with it. Um, so I'm trying to, again, share everything we've learned and be very open about it. Uh, but building communities can be hard, and keeping them is even harder. As this guy didn't work out. Actually, it kind of did work out. It's still happening. I visited that ashram once. It was cool. Uh, but communities are difficult. They get really sticky. So what I'll share with you guys is how do we grow our community in an average of 150,000 members a year, uh, kept a core team. Actually, a bunch of them are here. Artie, Monica, Alex, hi. Um, and really doubled every 12 months, and we are still doubling now every 12 months, which is kind of like phenomenal. So, uh, so again, I'll share about everything. So here are my top five, simple, way too wordy. It's not going to be one of these Apple presentations. It's going to be way, way too wordy, and I have 15 minutes, so I'm going to go really fast. And, uh, and I'm always uh, open to, if anybody ever want to reach out to us and talk to us how we do different things and you need help building a community, we'll help. All right, so I'm going to go quick because I don't have much time. So really, you start communities, I think, uh, with really a really strong set of principles of who you are, and in particularly in open source, because this is an unforgiving audience and, and people and engineers and developers and makers. It's really it's people with, with a higher vision and higher views of life. It's not just about commercializing. It's about learning, intellectualism, sharing, etc. So really think of yourself that you're building, when you build a community, a green, safe, wonderful park with birds water fountains, and an amazing library that is open for everybody. That's really what you're building. Um, 
And, and also another thing is when you build a community, you actually don't own the community. You don't own a community. So it's funny when, when Anand bought us, we're like, you know, you're not buying anything because we don't own these people, all their content, it's all open source, and they can go away tomorrow. So you don't really even own anything. So think about this, so when you start these things, or when you build a community, you actually don't own anything. And by the way, people come to the community because of your content, and you don't even own any of the content. And you shouldn't own any of the content because it is open and it is open source. Um, what else? Uh, so there's a variety of things about how you think about content and people that you don't own them. And if it's only a community and it's an open park and it's fun and it's friendly, it's the internet, people in communities are on the internet, there's always going to be this troll that show up. It's typically a guy. Uh, he's typically, sometimes he could be kind of sexist and weird and say weird comments to people. And they, they really, we notice some of the trolls attack women on the site and we don't even have enough women on the site. Uh, get rid of trolls. And sometimes the trolls are the smartest people on the site too. It doesn't matter. You don't care what they do and what they contribute. Trolls are a bad thing for your communities. If you notice a troll, talk to the troll. And if the troll stays a troll, hit the delete button and never look back. Um, never break the law. Oh, OK, OK. That's good. I, I, hit, I hit the mark. Uh, have good taste in everything that you do. You know, you can actually take a stand, but don't be too political. You know, but take a stand on what you believe in. Uh, work hard on building beautiful software. Everything we do now is online. Things should be easy for people. Don't make it hard. You know, it doesn't have to be super designed, but make it easy for people to use. Um, here's another interesting thing. Don't be a beggar. Money is actually important. A lot of people that we meet, they're like, well, we don't want to make money. It's not about the money. Well, guess what? If you're not going to make money to just pay your employees really shitty salaries, what we did for our employees for years, they barely got paid, um, they would have left eventually, and we wouldn't even have a community. So figuring out a way to actually create some sort of a business model for your community is really actually critical. Uh, never buy names, never sell names, even with Avnet now. We never one time shared a database with, with the mothership. They never even asked for it because we told them, you do this once and you can say goodbye to this beautiful thing that we built because they won't trust you. So never do any of that. Uh, your integrity is never for sale. And for example, like little things for us, we said, we just hate banner ads. We don't want banners on the site. Even though people told us, we'll give you money, put banners on the site. We're like, we just don't like banners. So decide for yourself. Where, where are your principles and where do you stop so we just don't serve bands on the site? Um, and like I mentioned, if you sold your business, it happens. Most communities, you know, the kind of starving entities that they end up aligning themselves with a larger company. Uh, again, don't, don't, don't devalue what you, your principles, what you thought of initially, and, and sell that when you sell the community. And a lot of companies have just nice, decent human beings, and they trust you, and they, keep, they let you uh, run it this way. Um, be super agnostic. Do good things in the world, and choose a focus. For us, for example, we chose that it's learning. <clears throat> learning is the value, not not anything else, you know, or above everything else. Also, then, then the second thing, like think about the team. What kind of people are you going to hire? Uh, people hire people that love what you do, love hardware, right? Not just anybody because they're good, you know. People that really love hardware. Uh, hire people that are burners from Burning Man, <laughs> love Burning Man from Burning Man. Burners, artists, nomads. I mean, our entire team was people we collected in hackathons, in different events. We just met them everywhere. Uh, they're not like professionals. Uh, and people have a vision and a voice. They bet on first timers. And then, and then what we do is like, hey, look, this, we have red tape. And we take a lighter and we'll psst, burn the red tape because you don't need red tape. Red tape is terrible. We already said, we're never going to break the law. We're going to do things with good taste. I trust the judgment. So you can do anything. And again, I, I, if I point out to our team sitting here, a few people that came, uh, we, we, don't, we don't tell them what to do. So if it's a volunteer or employee, we tell them just innovate, do something good for the community, good for the world, and execute. There is no red tape. We're not going to tell you what to do. If we need to manage you, you're out of here because there's no managers there either. Um, so for example, Alex Lowe, you guys know Alex? Yes, everybody knows that. Uh, she's like a celebrity, right? And she, she did it her own way. We didn't tell Alex what to do. Now she's on YouTube. She gets like hundreds of thousands of page views and video views every time she posts something. She's on a cover page this month of, of Hackspace, the Raspberry Pi magazine. I'm wearing her shirt. There's a t-shirt. It's Alex. Um, and uh, and she, she is a mother of an owl. You can ask her about it. It's amazing. She gave birth to an owl. Uh, Monica Houston, she does all of our events, hackathons, goes on the road, meets people, meetups. 
She's the, the, the real world of the hacks, the hackster, uh, the hackers of Be Beverly Hills. That's what she does. She's out there uh, in Artie Beavis. He's a social media guy. And I'll talk about social media. He gets more engagement than the Kardashians. It's true. So it's really important to have good people that really, really drive your message and, and your causation and what you do uh, everywhere. This is really important. So let's say you have a community and you want to kind of make a name for yourself. Five minutes. Um, you got to really, you got to stand out. You know, it's, it's kind of like a marketing thing, but you need that too, right? So we started and we kind of missed, like, why are we even here? There's so many other communities that are doing great. Why do we even exist? And, and what well, we want to exist. So what we did is, uh, this was actually Monica's idea. She, she went, let's just go on the crazy roto, buy a DeLorean, hack it to death, and call it Hack the Future. Uh, so we actually did that. We went on eBay, we bought a DeLorean, <laughs> and we just drove it everywhere, including uh, to Sparks Fund's uh, annual autonomous vehicle, plus another word, competition? Yes. Uh, which was fun in, uh, in Colorado. And uh, we went to 12 cities in 12 months. We met thousands of users. We even made money from sponsors. We said, hey, Microsoft, want a sticker on a DeLorean? $70,000. Done. And they give it to us. Um, so it was really, really fun because it was exciting. It was in inspiring. We also talked about the story, DeLorean, beautiful story, you know, stainless steel, but the inside is not so good. How can we take this machine, bring it to the future in a better way? Started with a Windows app. We saw that. It happened. Um, so, so think about a moment. You have a community, have, a, have these moments, and these moments keep coming. It's not like a single moment, but there's one that kind of sets you apart. Um, and do good in the world. Again, your moments are bigger. You know, we did other stuff beyond that. We're doing all these series about women hardware. Uh, we did this little collaboration with the Jane Goodall Institute, even gave money to Jane Goodall. Uh, we took our team once to Bali to build a second version of Hackster uh, for three weeks, and we paid for this whole thing. Uh, we all live in one house on the beach. So there's a lot of weird things that you should do for your team and for your partnership to kind of make sure uh, that you have that moment. The DeLorean, by the way, uh, please rest assured, was rescued. It's been adopted by somebody in Seattle, and now it's in a sanctuary. It's being humanely raised. It's eating uh, grass-fed stuff, and it's good. Uh, partnerships, OK, so we'll talk about partnerships. Partnerships are huge for communities. You're nobody when you have a community. You need to have those partners that help you grow. So focus on partnerships with companies and communities that are much larger than yours. Provide the partners a service that, that uh, help you both grow. It's not just about you, about them too. What do you do to help them grow? Um, plan active uh, activities with partners. Don't just have a partner. Do things with them. Go, do events with them. Do contests with them. Uh, workshops, webinars. Do a lot of stuff. You are the content engine at the end of the day. Uh, what else? Make them happy. You can grow from a single partner between 1% to even 20% of your community. It's incredible. Uh, our, our partnership with Arduino, for example, <laughs> I can't even tell you. It's probably more like 30% growth because of a single partnership. Um, and use these relationships with large companies to shine light on great ideas and open innovation. You know, we'll, we'll show up on the Microsoft uh, homepage, on an Infineon homepage. Uh, it's amazing. So people in our community get this amazing spotlight because we create these partnerships for them. I always follow the principles with the partners. I always try to put banners on your, on your site, just say no. Uh, and, um, and even though most of your partners are not open source, everything on Hackster is open source. You know? So everything has to be open. And the one thing that we love the most, we have this Robin Hood business model, which is really not the best business model. You call it take from the rich, give to the poor. So if you just, there's so many amazing innovators out there that do stuff, but they, don't, they can't pay us anything. And even though we need to make money, because otherwise we'll shut down. Uh, so if you're like a small company, just a, you know, for those of you who know us, we won't charge you anything. Everything we do is free. But if you're a large company, we'll double charge you. So you can pay <laughs> for the other guys. Um, the fourth thing is, uh, fifth thing, like content. So remember, you exist truly also for content. So uh, keep your community super busy. You know, give them, uh, you know, providing with technical workshops, uh, product webinars. Do amazing bl blogs by guys like uh, Alistair. Where is Alistair? Here, right here. Just learned yesterday, he's also a PhD, astro, astrophysics. 
Uh, so, so he's an amazing writer. He knows so much what's going on you know, in, in, in the hardware community and open source and the different innovations. So we work with a, a variety, of, a bunch of uh, bloggers. We, we don't blog ourselves a lot because what do we have to say really is the people in your community that have to say and they have a voice and they, have, they, can, they can write well. So we got Alex Deere, which we're very uh, grateful for. And he writes for a bunch of other companies too, even our competitors. I hate that thing. We, should, we don't have competitors. We all have friends. Uh, do meetups. Uh, you know, we have, like, for example, 60 ambassadors for Hackster Worldwide. They, at some point, like, they'll even run events that have over 1,000 people every month attending our events. And they, these uh, events are just for free, and they get to learn about new things. Uh, design contests. We're doing all these design contests all the time. So we already gave over 3,000 kits from our partners to people in the community. People in places and countries, they have no access and no affordability to buy anything, or even if they have the money, they couldn't even buy it. All of a sudden, they have access to things, and then they get scholarships, they get into schools, they, they uh, get jobs because of that, which is incredible. We gave over $650,000 in just cash and prizes to our community because of that, and we didn't give it, our partners did. 20% um, of all of our content come from our contests, and 80% of all our revenue come from contests, so contests are awesome, people love contests. Social media, remember that most of your community members, they don't really live on your site. They don't show up on our site on Hackster every day. They're actually on Facebook and Instagram and, well, Reddit and other places. So make sure you meet them over there too. Don't just meet them where you are. You don't expect people to come see you. See them where they actually hang out. There's other parks that they like that are nicer than your park. Um, and then think about your news, newsletters. Newsletters are awesome, news, but, but focus on your core value. If us, it was about learning. So newsletter is about learning, about sharing what people can learn. It's not about selling them products, etc. Uh, newsletters are great for ads, but you know, but just don't focus on ads, you know, because again, you're going to ruin your newsletter. And by the way, don't take every ad because some ads are just obviously are ads, you know. And if it's an obviously an ad, people are just going to delete it and just going to think that you're just trying to sell them stuff. So n none of that. Be very, very specific and understand your audience. Um, I think I made it to the end, kind of. So at the end of the day, we, and also if anybody wants to build a community, really think about who you are. So we just want to be a community for hardware developers, makers, and hackers. That is friendly, it's approachable, it's curated. You can't just post anything to it. It has to be good stuff, it has to be complete. Uh, well organized, beautifully designed. We happen to like design, so it's uh, not kind of hackerish, it's pretty. Um, without se se serving banner ads, without telling people's names, without tolerating trolls, without doing all these, oh, I'm a startup, I'm going to do another funding run. We did take some money. We took $150,000 to start this thing, and we never took money from anybody ever again. Because it just, it's that game we didn't want to be part of. Uh, and we also didn't want to make the uh, analog sing signal with uh, cupcake recipes. It's, it's a bit of an instructable stab. It's not fair. I love cupcakes, and I think that it's OK. Uh, but anyways, but that's what we want to do. And. Uh, Thank you, and before I go, you need this. For Alex, right here, keeping bears here, we made skateboards, and we call them the glow boards. Uh, and if you buy this Hackspace magazine from Raspberry Pi, it's on shelves, I think, in the next couple of weeks or so, you get to win a Hackster skateboard. Thank you very much. Good to Do you have any questions? I know it was more of a stand-up comedy, but you might have questions. Or one question. Yes. Cool. It's a, it's a good question. What's a business model besides selling content? So, by the way, also, everything should be transparent. So we put it on the website, including all of our pricing, so forward slash business. So everything is focused on uh, education, right? So we tell people, you can buy a contest and serve it on Hackster. You can buy a workshop and serve it on Hackster. You can buy an event. We'll do an educational event, and we'll do it for you. So we do events, workshops, webinars, etc that companies get to actually uh, put on Hackster. Or we can even embed Hackster on people's websites. Uh, if you're a big company, we'll charge you. If you're a small company, we won't charge you. So Hackster becomes a white label uh, community within websites. Yes? How do you, uh, how do you scale up? That's uh, the worst question somebody can ask me because uh, we are able to scale. This community is growing so fast, it's overwhelmingly fast, but uh, we're not sure how to scale the business without ruining the business. 
So it's a good question, but we're trying to think about more educational scenarios that will scale up the business model. But that's, by the way, why a lot of communities end up selling to a larger company because it's not the best business, but it's a necessary must and it's, it's something that people have to have and it's fun to do too. So it's a great addition to a larger company, but not as a standalone business. If you want to make lots of money and just start a community, that's probably not a good business model because you can sell them out. Right. Thank, Thank you. you.